acting is um, with VPPA, master photographer. He's been a friend of the club for a long time. Um, I think he's one of the best evaluators we have because he tells it like it is. And, you know, sometimes people might get their feelings hurt a little bit if <laughs> the picture gets <laughs> critique, but it, it certainly helped me. I know over the last 11, 12 years that I've been in the club, listening to the evaluators and Anthony and people like that, I've learned a lot and my photography's gotten better. So just thicken your skin a little bit and uh, take it as positive feedback. And Anthony, I'll just let you uh, roll on from here. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna throw a couple of things out just based on the conversation and, and address a couple of things, if I can, before we get started, we, we experience this at a professional level as well. Uh, and, you know, how do we compete fairly against other individuals? Uh, so I'd be more than happy to sort of provide some insight into that, uh, because that was what was mentioned. You know, you do want to compete against the best uh, if you really want to push yourself to get better. And all this will come back to what we're talking about tonight. Uh, but if somebody says, oh, that's an amazing image that makes you feel good for, you know, a minute or two. But if somebody really looks at your image, gives you positive feedback or tells you, hey, it's not suitable for competition. Uh, it might suck for a little bit, you know, having to swallow that pill and, and hear that. But I promise you, ultimately, it will make you a better photographer. And that's how I got to where I am. It's how Fred got to where he is. You know, you talk to any of the people that do this professionally, compete professionally, and we're competing internationally. So we don't have categories of, you know, amateurs and professionals and things like that. We're competing against literally any photographer in the world that wants to put in their images into PPA, for example, like what I'm talking about here. Uh, and if you really want to know what you're made of, that's exactly that's what you want to do. Uh, you know, it's it's the best way to improve your skill is to have that honest feedback and to go against the best in the industry. Um, the other part about sort of in person and online, uh, it was my original intention to be there in person. Uh, there was some email chatter that sort of went back and forth and it appeared more people were going to be attending on Zoom over in person. So made that decision that Zoom might be a better option in this case. Uh, I also said it doesn't matter to me. I'll show up anywhere. I'm at the surface of the club. Uh, I will tell you on a PPA level, that they are looking at moving these types of competition to online to where even the judges will no longer be sitting side by side in a room looking at images. We have five judge panels. We have an alternate. We have a jury chair. It's a very structured process that we go through. So even because of logistics and COVID and all these other things, there's even we're past some of those, they're looking at moving to this arena of having you know, a judge in California, one in Australia, one in Florida, uh, and doing the critiquing and judging just as we're doing here. Uh, that saves on cost to the organization, saves on travel, uh, in theory can potentially get you better judges uh, because you can have your top guys not out of their studio for two or three days of travel and missing income and those other sorts of things that we have to pay attention to. We do this full time. So anyway, so that's, you know, I have information and, and ideas I'm more than willing to share with the club if you guys are interested. But I will tell you sort of on a professional level and a professional arena, that's kind of where things are headed. Um, so for what that's worth to you guys. Yeah, I think that's uh, anyway, great, Anthony. I think a lot of us would agree with that. Yeah, so uh, more than happy to help out. Oh, and the board positions. Hey, Fred, what do you think about being on a board? Is that a good thing? Or <laughs> I talked poor Fred into being into the board of Virginia PPA. Uh, we were desperate for people too. And that shows you how desperate we were. We needed even Fred to get on the board. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is hugely important to the life of an organization to serve and give back. Right. If you have been a member of the organization, your club for three years or longer, and you've never served in a board position, you've never helped coordinate a meeting, you've never hosted, uh, I kind of have to say shame on you. Because about three years, and especially at five years, hopefully you've gotten enough out of that club. It's worth your time to give back to that club. 
And that's the way that we push forward. And we are hugely proponents of that, again, in the professional arena. And that's why we have PPA now for how many years, Fred? A lot, over 100. We're the, it's a, the oldest 100, 125. organization. Yeah. So uh, hugely important to do that. It isn't a tremendous amount of time that you have to put in, but I'll tell you, you definitely get back more than what you put in when you serve in a board position. All that aside, soapbox is off in the corner. Uh, we'll start looking at images as soon as someone would like to, oh, they already got it down there, share screen. Uh, anybody have any questions or anything for me before we get started on this? No, After I would just say thanks for your input, Anthony. That was good. Uh, I think it's yeah. a lot of food for thought for the board next year. Oh, man. I, I've just I've done it for so many years. Uh, I have a lot of information. I'm actually helping West Virginia get their professional association back up and running again. So this is definitely in my wheelhouse. If you want information, more than happy to help out. Yeah, I um, really appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. So we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, share screen here and see if we can get to the screen for... Lightroom, which is what I'm going to be using. Okay, that's a big boy near the Shoshone River in Wyoming. All right. So first of all, I don't know why big boy is out here in the middle of the uh, of nowhere. But again, uh, we've waited so long for this to start. We probably all want to have whatever's on that plate. So this is just amusing. It's an amusing image. Uh, you certainly have your subject right in your face. It's well positioned on a third. Uh, and then you sort of look and you see like this amazing scene that's behind it. So actually you could have a pretty funny photo with, you know, big boy here in the front, or you could have an amazing scenic that's in the back. So it's pretty interesting that both of these things are sort of showing up here together. Uh, but the fact that they are together and the way they've been placed, uh, great image, well done. Photographer is Mark Best. All right, so that was the only print. So I'm gonna have to go change to the assigned category is what you'd like to see next? That's correct. Okay, so let me get rid of these panels. We'll go back to where I was and this should be the first image. Yeah, that's... The, 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 the top bar is still, still crossing the image on top. Okay, now that's, that's, that's the best we can do. So okay. This, this is three, two, one. That's the title of the picture. Three, two, one. Uh, okay. So this this is great. This is kind of a great capture. You can feel the mud in your toes when looking at this image. Uh, the right amount of cropping has been done to this. You have great foreground, great amount of sky. Uh, you know, captured this at just such a fun moment and can you guys see the cursor here i'll sort of point around some if you can yes, um, yes we can see you know the fact we're you know we're airborne here i mean they just captured this at a great time the laughter that you see from these guys just sort of going across and sort of jumping this is a great fun image great candid i don't know if it's like a you know friendship thing or a you know bridal party uh you know pre-wedding uh, whatever it is they just look like they're having fun and you want to jump in with them Paul Bigford. A moment in time. This is a beautifully done image um, as far as conveying the title. So I really do enjoy this. The unfortunate part is there's a lot of technical issues with this which would prevent this from doing well in competition uh that would include our extreme angles on the sides of this which have not been adjusted and then as you start looking you're seeing all this fringing that's happening in those transitions between the sky and the buildings and these lights and all through there. Um, I'll give credit that that's probably a bird up there uh, and not a sensor spot, although we always have to be diligent to make sure we get those out. 
Uh, so this is great. It is a little challenging to sort of find our subject, which I assume is this guy here in the center. Uh, if I could wave a magic wand, it'd be great if that person were a little closer. This could just be street photography, though, I realize. You could just be capturing it on the run. Um, but again, these issues of, you know, quality are hard to overlook. And in professional judging, this would not be accepted for that. Uh, there is still an interesting story that's within here, but if you cropped it that much, you probably wouldn't have the detail uh, again to make the, the image fly. Wiley Wambier. About time to migrate. All right. So uh, I've got these little guys outside my window too. And uh, I think they are about ready to, uh, to migrate. So this is nice uh, image, but you know, it's not exceptionally sharp. There seems to be a fair amount of grain in this particular image. And also you have like this little pinpoint of light sort of coming off the eyeball there that almost makes this look a little bit like a flash has been used uh, on this particular image. And this bird is so beautiful and so intricate and so tiny uh, that that's really where the interest of this is. But then you have this massive red, you know, feeder that's in the bottom left. And that really competes for attention and the image. So the focus should be more on the bird and less on that feeder. Uh, so if you have the opportunity to hang out and uh, keep capturing this, just try to keep that in mind. Uh, I've even seen where people will, will paint those feeders, almost all of them are red, uh, you know, to sort of tone that down a little bit because that's so bold, it's overpowering this little guy. George Steele. About time. All right, so this is one of those, it's, you know, it's a little harder to, sort of grasp this initially and then you're like oh you know this tree is growing through how long has it taken for this thing to grow through these bars that are here so uh you know without the assigned category it would be really challenging for somebody to maybe kind of figure this out uh and also it's just you know isn't it's definitely interesting but a little flat sort of overall uh perhaps like a different time of day because it looks like some dappled lighting here on the sidewalk in front the sidewalk that much of it really doesn't add to the story the bars are kind of skewing off to the sides so having a little more uh, detail in this and a little different time of day uh, the issue when you have some of those things then the judges are going to start looking at other things around the image and then we look up in the top corner we see the fence off in the background you know which doesn't add to the story uh, so just sort of be careful on this and, and and look at it from you know a critical standpoint run it by some other folks uh, and then they're going to pick up on some of these things, you know, the sidewalk not being parallel to the edge, uh, all those kind of things that kind of tend to add up to, to take the score down a little bit. Uh, but interesting to see this and, and attempt to capture it. Bowling Milner. Back to the future. All right. Well, this, you know, you get points for comedy here. Uh, so it's pretty funny, you know, great expression on this, uh, this character. And you know, it's pretty funny. Now, the expression alone is, is you know, obviously kind of priceless here. The, the issue is with using the, the strobe or the flash that you've used here, that light is so harsh and it's just illuminating that paper so much uh, that it really takes away from seeing really the subject and that expression that's there. My eye sort of keeps coming down to this paper and then the pan is so close to the camera, it's not even in focus. So, you know, you just have to be careful, those kind of things, pull that in closer, feather that light up so it's not blasting on that piece of paper. Uh, and this would make this a little bit more interesting of an image. Uh, last thing too, is you're a little tight on that uh, headroom uh, above there. You need a little more space above that. Ted Jerkuda. Blast from the past. All right, so you really sort of feel that here uh, with this particular image. 
So nice uh, for sepia tone, nice, nicely done there. Uh, I like the placement of where the subject is, of the way the horses are, uh, you know, designed the way that they're leading. Uh, it's an interesting kind of deckle edge to it, which you don't see that often anymore. Uh, but it feels like I can't place where this is kind of happening. It's like there's nothing in the background has been totally washed out. Uh, there could have been like a million distracting things back there behind it. Uh, but it really doesn't give me sort of a, a context and just makes it, well, I just wonder like where this guy is going. And then I start looking like this wheel's all cantered and it looks like it's going to, you know, fall off of this thing. And that very well could have been like how it was. Uh, so it just has a very odd feel to it. It's kind of fogged out like around the horse's legs, but then it gets sharp at the horse's face and then up towards the guy. So you're doing those kind of techniques and those types of things. You just have to really be careful with that to make sure that it makes sense for the story. Tony Johnson. Well, this title is in Latin and that's supposed to be Carpe Diem or Carp Diem. Okay. So uh, as I've always said before, be careful when you use foreign languages for your subjects, even something that is well known as what this is, uh, because you're going to run across people that can't either say it or pronounce it, or the judges will have no clue what it means. So always be careful when you do that, just as a general notice. Uh, that being said, uh, interesting, and this certainly goes along with the subject, great sort of capturing this, nice with the leaves. Uh, I wave a magic wand, maybe play a little bit with, with time of day, perhaps. Uh, it looks a little bright on the center and then you've darkened it down all around the edges of this and it's kind of offset a little bit. So something about it just doesn't feel quite right. It almost feels like it's placed there the way these shadows are happening around this front edge and around the side of it. So um, just be careful. You really can't quite tell what's going on there. Uh, and then you've got such a super bright uh, red streaks of these uh, leaves sort of coming out over here, but those aren't really other places. They're, they're downplayed a lot more. So it looks like you've bumped up the saturation on that channel, perhaps a little too much, because uh, I'm not seeing that in any of the other leaves around, maybe a few down here. Uh, but just sort of be careful for those things where it tends to go a little more unnatural because the interest is here. And then your eye is going to see that crazy, unusual, bright color and just start traveling to that spot. Anita Storino. Catfish special at the Audit Cafe. All right. Uh, so a decisive moment indeed. Uh, doesn't look entirely sharp to me. Uh, great on sort of capturing this moment and keep your titles uh, condensed. Uh, the longer your title uh, never tends to work well for an image. So try to keep your titles nice and tight. Uh, I give you points for uh, the presentation of a, a, attempting a mat. Well, be careful when you're using like a bright white on that stroke, like what you've done here, because there's not really a bright white anywhere in that scene. And you're like, well, there, what about the white teeth of this walrus or whatever's in here? Uh, they're not really white. It's an off white. And when you give the judges something that is white, meaning the stroke, they then have it to compare in the image. So, um, give you credit for, for, for using that, but just be careful, uh, use it sparingly uh, and choose your colors wisely for that. John Schickler. Christmas Town Clock. All right, so this has a great uh, seasonal feel to it. So really enjoying this, this image just sort of right off the bat. Um, Nice colors across here. I don't see anything wacky sort of happening where those colors are meeting the dark sky back behind it. And just sort of the more you look around, you sort of people milling about. So this is a nice capture. Cindy Walker. Dorsey Station Clock. Nice. So, uh, you know, this is great. Uh, nice capture, nice even lighting on there. So time of day seems to be good for whatever's filtering in on this. Uh, the only thing, and the matting is is nicely done on this. So this is a, 
great use of uh, a thin stroke. And then it looks like maybe even a little bit more sort of outside of that, but it's really subtle. I really have to look for it. So the tones of this are what is really appealing about this particular image. Uh, if I could wave a magic wand, I would back out a little bit because it does feel really tight uh, cropping wise in this. A little bit more room around that would make it feel a little more comfortable. Lara Davenport. Do you have the correct time? All right. So uh, nice, but evidently, let's see, looks like they're pretty close on their time. So it looks like they do. Okay. So I don't know if, if this were done, I would look at this image. I'd be thinking that somebody would want to do this as a, a commercial type image. Uh, and if that were the case, the fact that the watches aren't arranged evenly would drive me nuts. Uh, it's, it's a whole art to judging um, commercial work. And in the arena of photographing watches is an art unto itself. Uh, there's typically positions of the hands and positions of the watches uh, and that this really isn't followed for that. You have, you know, some sort of looks like they're falling out of the case this way there, they're over. So taking a little more time to craft this uh, would have made this so much better. And then you kind of have like this one random one hanging down over the side and the way the lighting is coming down so hard from the top. This is now in shadow and we really can't enjoy this time piece that's here. Then we get down to the digital and then that's not even sharp. It's just blurry, like all the way around that. Uh, so this is one of those images. It's a really cool idea. It's great to sort of have this concept, uh, but the execution of it would not fly very well uh, for, for competition. Kemp Davis. End of summer. All right. So uh, nice capture here of this little guy or gal sort of hanging out. Nice tones on this. Nice sort of using this angle to allow for a darker background behind the lightness of the face of this. So as far as placement and everything there, that went really well. Uh, I'd like to see some treatment on the outside of this for presentation would make this look even better. Uh, but I do see sharpness. So, you know, I'm seeing sharp beak, sharp eye, sharp feathers coming across and on here. So nicely done. Pat Davis. Fading memories. All right. So nice leading lines here. Uh, it seems to be we have like a ton of green sort of coming through in the sky, but I'm not necessarily seeing it in other places of the image. So just sort of be aware of that. Sometimes when you do effects to an image, it can have that effect on it. Uh, the more I look at this, you sort of see this little light up here in the window. I kind of wonder if, you know, somebody's sitting up there and writing their final uh, thoughts on life. I mean, you just, you know, it's a, it is an image that can weave a story and kind of draw you into it. Uh, again, presentation on this would probably help it as well, but uh, nicely done. Michelle Garrigan. His time was up. Yeah, it looks like indeed it was. So this is just kind of like one of those, one of those wacky kind of images. Um, and, you know, props for coming up with the creativeness to kind of do this. Uh, you know, the, the tone here is just so bizarre that my eye kind of keeps going to like this section here. And then I'm like, all right, well, what else is going on? Then I kind of look and I see, you know, the brightness of the arms and kind of like you know, the wacky shadows that are coming down across there. And then you see this odd kind of fade off on the back here. So you just sort of have to be careful for those kinds of details, how this darkening is so extreme kind of on the sides and, you know, causes some issues there. Uh, but as far as humor and creativity, uh, that's fantastic. But again, just be careful in these kind of things, because once judges start looking, they're going to start looking at our things like the little splotchy highlight, this arm looks dirty, you know, compared to this one, you know, I'm not sure what's going on there with skin tones and, and so forth, or maybe she rubbed her arm on his beard and, you know, that would explain it. So, um, you know, anyway, creativity, uh, well done. Joe Ring. 
it wasn't so long ago. Oh, nice. Uh, so, you know, you gotta be careful when you critique stuff like this, cause you know, it's like somebody's mom or grandma and you know, they'll hunt you down if you say anything bad. Um, so I'm going to judge this on the standpoint of a portrait. Um, first of all, it's fantastic to have this, this family will cherish this forever to have this portrait. Uh, it looks a little contrived. Um, and the way that the photo is sort of sitting there and I realize she's mimicking what's done in the photo, but it's really competing for me to see the beauty that she has at the age she is now, the way that is. So a different arrangement or even her arms in front of that doing the same pose because the frame right now is so bright and so forward that it's dominating. Uh, so then we get back to the hands and you sort of see what, you know, the years have done to those hands that are in there. Uh, and you see this still gentle expression that's like in her face, you know, so you can definitely weave a story in this. Uh, and I definitely give you credit for that. Uh, but the flat lighting uh, and arrangement of sort of this, this image in the front, uh, needs a little bit of work and you'd really have a story here. And then again, just be careful and being so tight uh, on the image on her, the top of her head there, uh, a little more space would be better. Fred Morton. It's about time. All right. So it's interesting, but I'm not sure if I follow the story maybe it's intimate time. I guess maybe you can weave your own story into this. Um, the thing that's kind of interesting though, is just the various issues that are going on here in the skin. Uh, and of course, foreheads different than cheeks, different from chest, different from here, uh, different from hands, but something really wacky is going on here. So I don't know what kind of filter has been applied or what's done, but there's a splotchiness that's all across the face, all across here, uh, the transition into this area. Uh, I would go back to the original file and see what happened because I don't think it would have come out of the camera that way. Uh, as far as body position, you know, I just need more of a reason of like why she's sort of standing that way. Uh, but the technical issues would, would keep this out of competition. Bruce Murph. Last sunshine. sunshine. Sunrise. sunrise, sorry. Last sunrise. Okay. So, uh, again, this is one of those. I'm not sure what's happening here. I don't know if this is like oil coming up through the ground and it's going to take over the earth. And so this is the last one. It's just a little hard for me to sort of follow the story of what's happening with this in the foreground because you haven't given me anything in the title for me to understand it. So I'm not sure what's happening. Um, if I had that, I could probably do a little better job of sort of chatting about it. Whatever it is, it is placed in a good position in the scene. This back here is gorgeous and just makes you sort of dream about what that is like back here. Uh, the tones of your stroke and the background, it fits perfectly for this. Uh, so you get points for that too, but I'm just left a little confused as to what's going on. Leo Weinberg. Letters from the past. Oh, nice. So this is a nice sort of a arranged uh, piece here. Uh, but since you had the time to arrange it and, you know, the subject's not screaming at you or on a deadline, uh, that means you can be really precise with it. So, you know, be careful with your folds. Make sure that you have sort of leading lines sort of into things that they make sense. Uh, and then, you know, what's the focus here? You're telling me sort of the letters and then my eyes up in this area here because it's so bright, so colorful, and so large in comparison to what you're telling me is going on down here. So, um, you know, think of maybe having these like on the table and not the vase, uh, you know, arranged, and then it's a very tight shot in, for example. So I would play some variations of this to see. Uh, and again, as I tell everyone, 
just my opinion. Other people will look at this and absolutely love it. Um, but, you know, we have old letters, uh, it looks like, and tied, and then we have brand new fresh flowers. So, you know, you, you start thinking about it in, in detail, you know, make sure that it makes sense. Uh, last thing I'll say is this is a really bold stroke to have for this particular image. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't mind the tone so much, but it's just so wide that my eye sort of bounces out to that. And I'm kind of like, why, why is that there? So I'll ease off a little bit on that. Carol Hageman. Like a rock. All right. So uh, don't think this is going to be going anywhere anytime soon, but you never know. Uh, this is interesting. You know, it's an interesting effect that's been applied to this to sort of give it that wacky sort of look. So for this particular piece, it kind of fits. Uh, I don't know that this foreground, though, is being very kind to you. And I don't believe it's necessary to feed into the story because there's almost more space down here at the bottom than what I'm seeing up at the top. And what's happening because of the effect or the way it was taken, this is super out of focus, almost looks like double vision going on down here at the bottom, and it doesn't add to your story. You could easily uh, take care of that with some creative cropping down here at the bottom, sunlining this a little bit. And the interest is right here. Uh, if I could wave a magic wand, I would probably tone down or chose a slightly different angle not to have this sort of competing with the coolness that's going on here in the center. Philip Snyder. Living on borrowed time. All right, I guess he is got the smokes in hand and probably has been since he was 12. Um, great, great image. I'm, I'm, I'm questioning kind of the sharpness in this kind of overall. You know, it appears that this is pretty sharp across here and down across, but once I'm getting over to his face, I don't see that sharp in Christmas and those, you know, those eyebrows and those eyes and that weathered, you know, uh, facade he has earned through the years uh, of this lifestyle. So it looks like you have a very narrow plane of focus going across and you've actually missed this being sharp. So you have a character like this. This is fantastic. Love the weather, the fingernails, the hands, the work this guy must have done through the years. Uh, but you're, you know, the fact that this isn't in focus, then we start traveling over here. And now what in the world is happening over here? You got this really crazy, uh, you know, outline that's happening around these fingers here, which doesn't make sense at all. And this giant fogging, which is coming across. So, you know, Unfortunately, those things are going to keep this again from going to a really higher level. Great subject, great capturing it. Great, you have a presentation on here, but those technical things are going to kill you. Susan Van Menen, nine o'clock class. All right, talking unicorns. Uh, so this, this is great, you know, you sort of can weave into the story, you know, there looks like they're on campus here, college back here. So, you know, we're kind of getting this feeling of like, oh man, uh, I don't, mm, looks kind of tough for 9 a.m., uh, but you know, the clock's back there, it says that it is. But you got that really bright lighting, which is giving you a crazy bright subject here in the front. Um, it'd be really cool if you could do this maybe like a little earlier in the day, have it even an earlier class. Uh, because what's happening is since that light is up and it is so bright, this, these other bikes behind are really competing because they're all growing out of that because you're in focus, uh, the opposite of the last image, uh, which in real competition, we never compare, but for the sake of training, uh, you're in focus here and like all the way to the back. You know, if this is your, your subject and story, uh, maybe a little shallower would have helped these things from competing against your subject. Because that's kind of a cool bike. Uh, and you could probably come in a little closer on this side. Kurt Engelman. Old home. Yep, I would agree. That looks like an old home. Uh, so nice capturing this. But, you know, again, you're, you're telling me old home. Uh, but what's kind of center in front is this giant barrel that's in the center and then as i start looking around the image i see a crazy amount of grain and noise and weird colors coming across the front of this 
which really makes no sense because it looks like a blasting sunshine day. So you wouldn't have high ISO for this. So you've adjusted the shadows. It looks like probably so much for this to uh, see this window and see these curtains that all that color in there is kind of shifted on you. So, you know, again, it's one of those things you got to be spot on with this. If there's an issue or something, then judges start looking around like, okay, what else is going on? And then you see like this crazy red that, or pink that's here in the background and, you know, your eye starts bouncing around. So um, uh, great to probably have seen this in person, probably looked amazing when you're standing there. Uh, but as far as conveying this as a uh, competition piece, probably not. Ed Hageman. One second ahead. All right. Uh, so great image, great capture. Nice having this stroke around the edge of this for presentation wise. Again, uh, this is just one of those things I would say, be careful. We've got a lot down here at the bottom and we're really pressing the top of this. So ideally having more space around the top would benefit this image quite a bit, but super sharp across here, sharp across. Again, decisive moment is really interesting. I had to kind of look a second to see where this rain was going, but you know, I was finally able to sort of capture that. Uh, but anyway, great image, great capture. Built with, with both. Orphan train memories. All right, so. You know, I understand trying to weave a, st a story about this particular one. Uh, you're really bright. I mean, my eye is bouncing to whatever reflections or whatever is going on, like out here in sort of the background. Uh, and so that's a little distracting sort of right off the gate. And it also looks like the angle of this photo is just kiltered. You know, it's, you know, you have such a weird angle going on with the bench and everything. It's almost like I feel like she's going to slide off the bench that way. So correct those kind of minor issues. You're going super dark down here at the bottom. So there's nothing to add to the photo. You can easily take off a little bit of this to add a little bit more to the top. Because again, you're really crunching down. And when I go to look at that space, I've got sort of these giant, you know, weird things in the, in the window behind. Uh, so I know somebody will say, well, that's what was there when I took it. Yes, it was, but you didn't have to shoot this exact angle across there. You know, you could have shifted your camera angle a little bit to position her head. So this was behind it, not all of that. So, you know, there's, you know, just be aware of those things when you're capturing portraits, especially what's competing with enjoying that subject. Rebecca Perry. Peony time, bud, blossom, seed. All right, so again, on the titles, make sure we keep them nice and, and concise when we can. Uh, great detail and sharpness across the very center of this. That's one of the first things we look at whenever we see images like this. Uh, sharp detail across the outside. There's no apparent blowouts in the highlights. That's the next thing that we're gonna look for. Uh, the only thing I would be careful with is just such a small stroke on the outside. And like what I was saying previously, it looks like it's pretty bright white. Uh, I probably would have toned that down to be a darker tone and not so thin. Uh, this is a case where that should either be a little bit wider or two strokes are there, obviously one wider than the other. This looks like it should be the inner and there should be another much darker tone on the outside of it. Play with that and see how that looks. Patricia Mumford. Race against the clock. All right, uh, this is a great uh, capture for a race. So great composition here, the lines of this coming down, then your eye travels up to this guy. He's got the camera and then you're back over to this guy, the camera, and then you're back down again. So you see how this really travels well around the scene. So this is super well done. Uh, it's super lucky that they're all so symmetrical sort of coming across here in their positions. Uh, again, one of those cases, ideally would love to have a little more space above this. Um, and then of course, if you want to do some 
presentation on that, that would probably help you as well, especially since you got this really cool blue, you could probably sort of pick on for an image like this, uh, which is vibrant to begin with. Terry Traxel. Reflection time. All right. So this is again, one of those things, reflection of time. Is that the title? Yeah, reflection time. It, Reflect, uh, re the just image. reflection time. Okay, so reflection time. The first thing I'm looking for is like, well, okay, where is the where is the reflection? Uh, and then it's like, okay, well, maybe we're standing here and we're sort of reflecting on time. But you know, it's hard to sort of tie that into that and sort of this bridge unless we're supposed to assume like, well, this is old and that's newer. And you know, it's a little challenging to sort of grasp that. And there's really, you know, the center of focus is probably the time, but that's so small in the overall scene. And that building is so chopped. And then this is so much more massive. So it's kind of interesting from a, you know, an, a, an angular uh, you know, viewing of this particular image, but uh, it's just oddly kind of presented with not having any presentation to it. And this feels like super crowded against kind of this massive structure that's, you know, obviously the interstate uh, here beside it. The title is Richmond's Timepiece. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my mistake, Richmond's Timepiece, but yes. Same, same. Great that we have the, the correct title, same, same comments apply. All right. Jay Denny. sense of time all right so uh this is nice again another kind of staged uh set image which means that you had all the luxury of time in creating this and composing it so what's the brightest part of this image the brightest part of the image is the sand and you did tell me that in the title but i think the story is in this right here with the timepiece and this beautiful old book that you have uh, and then I'm not seeing any detail of like the pages across here. So I think the story needs to be sort of refocused into this area here. And if you sort of squint and look at things, as you guys have heard me say many, many times before, the brightest thing in this scene is all of this sand that's right here. That's not nearly as cool as what's happening in this area here. Mm -hmm. And Fulcher. Steps of time. Oh, cool. So it kind of takes you a little bit to, or it takes me a little bit to sort of acclimate to this. So this is interesting, interesting kind of arrangement, sort of like trying to figure out like uh, where are those steps and how's this thing going? So uh, just be careful, whatever uh, effect or lighting has been done has gone really wacky on you up across this area here. Uh, but great to sort of see this and capture it. Very interesting and certainly fits for the, uh, the, the category. Carol Annis. Sunlit street light. All right, so this is nicely done. Uh, got a little bit of a kilter to it, but man, those street lights I know sometimes are much like that, but it makes me want to push that over just a little bit. Uh, but this is nice, nice having sort of a, uh, a background for that thing to sit on. In this case, that black does work pretty well because you've got black and dark areas all through here. Nice tones and no bleed over into this. So that's a really important uh, aspect that we're looking for on images like that. There's nothing funky happening around the edges of this. So well done. Sarah. Tea time throwback. All right, so nice image. Again, sort of a stage sort of set uh, piece here. It looks like we're a little out of focus here on these front kind of elements. Again, if I were looking at this, I'd be looking at it uh, kind of as a commercial type image to either uh, advertise this place or the setting or something like that. And this would be one of those things that would really kill you because it's right here in the very front of the scene. So my eye is leading to this because first of all, I want that plate specifically what's in the center would be ideal. Uh, but I want to see it sharp. I want to see it crisp, make sure I want to eat that. 
Uh, and it's okay if these things back here get a little bit softer as we go back, but these things up front should be sharp and crisp and focused. Uh, your corners here look a little rounded on this presentation. So where you see that stroke and up here in the corner, always make sure you sort of set your settings right when you're doing that stroke so that doesn't happen um, because it looks a little wacky when you get up on a big screen and, and see that uh, presented. Uh, and you could probably tone that down a little bit, both in the brightness of it and the width of it. Karen Davis. The last time. All right. So creative play on words there. Uh, super good on creativity. Uh, just, you know, it's one of those images going to take a second to kind of digest this. Uh, but creativity off, off the chart, fantastic to sort of think about that, see that, put this in this perspective. Uh, things we're going to be picky on is it looks like we're kind of missing some numbers. Seems like the spacing should be a number that's here. So I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, maybe that time's already flown by, fell off of there. Uh, be careful on the texture and technique. It's getting really kind of wacky up here. I realize it's wacky sort of overall. These almost look kind of painted on and this extreme shadow down. Uh, you know, this is gonna be one of those ones, judges are probably either gonna like it, think it's the most amazing thing they ever saw, or they're just gonna sit back and be like, uh, yeah, not sure what to do with it. Uh, technically, if I'm just looking at it as an art piece, you know, you've got kind of these splotches of brightness, which are over here on the side, and we really can't tell what the purpose of that is leading to the story. So just make sure all your elements do contribute to what you're trying to tell. Marianne Barnhart. The old homestead. All right. Um, again, this is one of those things that the right time of day can make or break these scenic kind of images. And it doesn't look particularly sharp anywhere in the scene. Uh, maybe a couple of shingles over here on the side, but you know, I'm not really sure what's going on. There seems to be like a really weird line going like around here and around the roof of this. There's a tremendous amount of foreground here, which is completely unnecessary to see the beauty that's in the homestead behind it. So I'm not even sure that the barrel is necessary, but that's your creative uh, license there. But for me, you know, you're telling me the homestead, I bet the beauty in this wood is amazing if you're up on it. So I do think there's a story in the scene. I'm just not sure this is it. Uh, and ideally different time of day, middle of the day is really hard for capturing something like this. Mark Best, the winning time. All right, fantastic, good for that guy. Um, and I like that you're mid-step on this, that, to that stroke around there, a little bit of an odd color choice there. Looks like you maybe picked off of the shoes or something like that. It just needs to be probably darker or just pick a different color. Maybe some of those dark shades of blue in there. But capturing a decisive moment, everything's nice and lined up, which I just love. Uh, so nice capture. Lynn Whitworth. Ta three or four. All right. Um, so nice. It's a, you know it's a little wacky having to look at this sort of from this view and backwards. So it's going to take a viewer a little bit to sort of gather to gather what's going on. And it also, you know, it looks like a photo of an actual like frame and mat. So that's kind of throwing me a little bit because you got these weird shadows and like tones that are sort of going on around this. Uh, so it's just different. You know, if you look at it just kind of like as an art piece of something that would go on the wall, maybe put this in a place that sells watches or clocks, it would be perfect for a spot that's like that. Uh, but I'm not quite understanding why we have shadows coming across here on the inside and not on this side and what's sort of happening with that. So as a judge, it's a little challenging. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start looking at other elements. Then I start looking in the center and I'm seeing this purple uh, that's going on in here, fringing that's going on in here, and a little bit's coming across there. We're going to start finding other things in there that don't quite make sense. So then you got to go in and sort of correct those issues. Harold Lena. 
time capsule. All right. So uh, again, the overall sort of technique that's been applied to this is, is a little much. I imagine this place is probably pretty interesting on its own. I would maybe personally dial down that effect by like half and see what that looked like. Because so much is going on, we're not seeing like any detail in here. We're beginning to lose detail that's in that. We can't really read what's going on. So I think we're losing some of the beauty that was probably in this location because of how extreme that effect sort of has been applied to it. Um, and then, you know, a little bit of presentation would sort of help again, uh, maybe the sermon for the night, uh, different time of day. And then, you know, your, your choice here of application or whatever you're doing, you're having all these extreme, you know, little, circles everywhere throughout the image, which is just super distracting, trying to enjoy probably what this building looked like. Dan Maurer. Time for a moment of silence. All right. So uh, nice capture here. Nice balancing for this particular scene. Uh, you know, you can sort of grasp all that. You know, you don't know if it's evening or, or morning time. It doesn't really matter. You just sort of get that feeling nice on the outline, nice positioning. There's no weird thing sort of growing out of him the way this has sort of been done. So a uh, nice, nice presentation, nice image. Linda Fern Schmiel. Yes, there is gone. All right, nice little study here. Uh, so again, just sort of be careful. I, I really enjoy what's happening with this image. These flowers or what's left of them or petals or whatever's happening here. Really cool texture in this, cool texture in this. You know, that's awesome. And then we start looking and like, oh man, got all these splotches that are happening sort of across here. And then you get over in this corner and this corner is completely out of control. You see, you know, the splotching that's going across there. You see the edge that's going across here now because of that effect that's sort of been applied. And then your image is not um, suitable for competition at that point because you're going to get nailed uh, on all this that's happening. It is also the brightest part of your scene, which is going to compete where the attention should be here. That was the last uh, image for the uh, assigned subjects. All right. Oh, sorry. Um... Do you guys need a break before I that start? That was uh, the next? Susan Kennedy. All right, so we're going to general next. Does anyone need a break before we start on that? Are we good? Good. That's the American icon. All right, let me take this off here. Get you guys back. Just think this is the scene that you guys saw the best, correct? Right. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, title again, please. American Icon. American Icon it is, the fluffy cows. Uh, that's your PSA from the National Park Service. Don't pet them. This is a great image. Uh, nice texture across this fella, uh, you know, in the fur, that eye that's looking right at you. So this, this is a nice capture. Again, one of those that probably a presentation would uh, certainly help. Uh, I don't know that the full bleed is the best friend to you for this particular image, but other than that, nice capture. Terry Truxel. Bejeweled beauty. All right, this gorgeous, just right out of the gate. You know, this is the ones that judges are looking for. It's like, oh, man, finally, uh, nice positioning of this fella, fella it. Uh, you know, everything about this is just nice. The vibrancy, their sharpness across the image. You know, the only thing I might say is that yellow is really bold and is fighting for attention uh, against this little fella trying to get a snack here. Uh, so, you know, feathering that light or toning that down uh, would probably help this because there is a lot of gorgeousness happening in this area right here. And Fulcher. 
better luck next time next time all right so uh this is pretty funny actually uh somebody must have been out with captain mike so the only thing you know this is great in sort of capturing this but you know it's really disturbing to me not seeing all of the eagle sort of taking off uh you know having those chopped wings on a bird that's so aggressively in flight uh and then you have this weird angle to the image as well you know which is based off of looking at sort of the waves and the way that that splash is um but talk about a decisive moment capturing this but you're thrilled beyond belief to sort of catch that that's great for doing it uh if i could wave a magic wand man i wish i could see the rest of that guy ted jerkuda bird alight all right so again a presentation on this would sort of be helpful and i'm going to guess you probably had several images perhaps of this because it looks like the you know your subjects turned their head a little far to the right so if you could ask them next time to not turn it quite so far and a little straighter to the camera uh, to sort of see that other eyeball uh, that would be better i realize they could just be paying you any an outrageous sitting fee and they're going to do what they want um, be careful though because of this lighting you know it's so bright on these leaves in and all around here that that really does compete for attention because this is a little guy or gal that's right here and you want to keep your attention right in this area so you could almost come in and eliminate probably the whole outer third of that image and improve this dramatically michelle garrigan bokeh and bokeh all right uh so this is interesting but again doesn't you know it looks like it's a pretty bold flash that's being used straight on onto this it's killed your detail that's sort of in these looks like carnations right here in the front of that uh the colors have been so saturated that you know it's sort of just getting wacky looking uh and then you've got this giant bright white mat around it which doesn't exist in the image so now i'm really struggling because i have something really bright and white and large that's drawing my attention from seeing what's happening here shashi air buck in velvet all right indeed indeed he is uh so this is nice again look at look at the whiskers man so that's how you know when it's sharp um you know, it looks like he missed a few here in the morning, but you can know, see eyelashes or something coming up off the top here. I mean, this is just super sharp. You can feel that velvet that's coming across. Uh, and then you still have the motion that's back here. So I don't mind this kind of motion as I move back through there. You sort of expect that uh, and a great freeze on the capture of the action here. Great choice of having that background sort of behind to sort of separate this fella. Uh, there plenty. There's more lead room than there is room in the back, which is great. Gives him room to sort of take off and run. Uh, man, put a little presentation on this, and uh, it would do even better. Cindy Walker, Buttercup Bomb. Oh, look at this again! Just kind of a nice, enjoyable art piece. Uh, so for something like this, you know, we're not expecting, <laughs> excuse me, everything to sort of be perfect on this um you know you've got some bright spots which are happening you know again if i could sort of wave a magic wand i wouldn't necessarily have those there and the weird edging that sort of goes along with it uh because it does sort of draw my eye to that you know these are just all interesting elements interesting technique that's been applied maybe try putting a little tiny stroke around that with one of these shades in here uh, and again, just be careful when you're using these effects or filters or whatever you've done, because you're getting kind of this ghosting edge around some of them, uh, which doesn't really help the image. But uh, well done. Very, very creative. Dan Maurer. California Condor. All right. So this image is going to come up and immediately it's going to get kind of canned and I, I hate to be so frank with it uh but there's no detail across this we're seeing like this weird kind of jagged outline all the way around 
there's crazy noise that's happening in the blue around it. There's no detail that's in the bird. So this is one of the things I would, I would encourage the maker to go back to the original and see if the original was done this way and sort of the post-processing that may have been done sort of led you to the point of where this is. Shashi Air. Climate change past due. All right, so man, interesting idea, okay? So I'll give you uh, points for, the, for the, the concept of coming up with this. But the way this sort of looks so placed there and the way that the lighting is on that, but it's all muted that's back here. Uh, you know, you've got this bright white stroke around there where none of this is really bright white. Even that has like a bluish kind of cast to it on the face of it. It's just not blended very well to really relay the story uh, that you want us to see because we're looking at sort of these technical issues to begin with. And this looks like nice and crisp and has some color to it. And again, that's just so muted and flat and totally different lighting. So uh, just, you know, perfect these kind of ideas and concepts. Um, so kind of on the right path. It's just uh, technically executed. Uh, execution needs a little bit of work. John Schickler. Dream of the egret. All right. So I... Get that this is kind of a dreamy kind of a scene uh, but we've gone so far over that we've got this glowing that's around here and this there's no detail left sort of across here uh, again this is one of those i might encourage the maker to go back to the original and maybe try this at like half of what it's presented as here because the the, the moment of capturing this and the curve of those wings and the reflection that's down here and straighten up that line that's across, those are all really cool, amazing elements to this particular image. Uh, but you've, in going too far where that's just glowing, it sort of becomes mushy. Uh, and then, you know, we're seeing detail here, none here, and then maybe a hint there. And it just, you know, I wanna see this, what it looks like and have detail there. Michael Orr. Ducky bath time. All right, little ducky. So uh, nice and crisp. Uh, it looks like it's sort of across there, but almost looks like it's been like over sharpened or something, you know, has sort of that feel to it. Uh, again, some of these terms that I'm, I'm talking about and using are not ones we necessarily use in professional competition. We have very select words that we use, but I'm looking at this for education for you guys. So just sort of keep that in mind and my PPA folks. Uh, probably cringing a little bit at some of these comments, uh, but this is all meant to, to help. So the things you have to be careful on are like this reflection here is coming down and around and out. Uh, so, you know, if you had waited like, you know, a second before or second after, you know, those types of things sometimes sort of make a difference. Uh, but, you know, this is interesting, you know, nice on the reflection, but then once we get out here, there's like no detail in this and we get this splotchiness that's sort of happening. You know, the story is in on this. So, you know, you want to come in closer probably on this to eliminate all these things which are negatively impacting your image. Pat Davis. Elk Pursuit. I don't know. I mean, it kind of looks like he's sticking his tongue out at her, but... Uh, be careful on your horizon lines. It looks like this is tilted at a little bit of an angle. And again, you have these majestic creatures and you've cropped this in pretty tight. Uh, I would give them a little more space around to move. And again, some presentation for this. Uh, and I'd probably look at these sequence of images and make sure that this is the one that has the most impact uh, for competition. Ed Hageman. In guard. All right, this is pretty cool. Uh, just in time for Halloween, you know, this is really cool. This design that's happening sort of in here almost reminds me of that time clock that we had back a few images. Um, so this is really cool. Cool texture it's on here. So whatever apply effect has been applied, <coughs> actually in this particular case, kind of works pretty well. Uh, the thing that's getting a little wacky is we got these nice gray tones and blacks in, the, in here. But then once we get up to the top, we start into like these blue tones that's up there. 
So I'm not sure that that really helps or is necessary for the image. I personally would rather see like the whole thing uh, in these tones. And I'm not sure that introducing a blue tones only in part of the image uh, helps this. Anita Storino. Enjoying the late afternoon breeze. Okay, so, you know, being a portrait guy, I'm always going to look at these and be pretty tough on them for, for our new viewers. Uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a flattering pose for this young lady, and it's hard to read her expression that she's having an enjoyable time. You've got really harsh lighting that's sort of coming across, giving a really weird edge on the side from that sleeve on the edge of her face. The lighting is split like on her face. Uh, you know, so this is one of those cases where if you put this in a portrait category to compete against portrait photographers, you're going to get hammered. Uh, so I would encourage different time of day, uh, study some posing to, to put her in a more flattering uh, pose for this type of a shot. Be careful the background selection where you have like these bright white things sort of growing out of the background. Uh, you know, those are kind of refinements which are going to help separate uh, your images from average to something more than that. Uh, last comment, just make sure we maintain that space to have that subject to have a little bit of room to move in there. That's really tight on the top. Link Whitworth. Happiness. All right. So it does look like happiness. Uh, nice expression. The challenge that we're having here is just with sort of the flat lighting across that. And we're sort of seeing this reflection of flash or whatever it looks like in sort of in the eyeballs. Uh, and this mystery hand that's coming from somewhere, we're not sure who it belongs to. So you always have to be careful with these types of things, uh, you know, either show more of it so that we know it belongs to her or sort of take it out of the scene because it's not necessarily adding to that. And then it just, we're just wondering, Who's there or is it hers? Uh, expression wise is great, great, you know, sharpness sort of across here, but you know, these shadows uh, are sort of giving away your technique of this. You know, this looks like a really cool area, great model, just much softer, more natural lighting would have made this look even so much better. Jerry Posnow. I have seen better days. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, a lot of texture in this. There's so much texture in the trees and everything. It's really competing sort of with our subject. Uh, but it's nice to sort of capture this. Nice sort of tones across it. Nice little double stroke that's on here for the presentation. All that works really well for this particular image. Uh, again, probably one of those things where maybe a different time of day would have been a little better for you. And it could be one of those things you have to go back and visit this spot multiple times to uh, sort of get this exactly what you would want. Uh, there's a tree I photograph quite often uh, in my travels and there's some days I drive past it. It's a great day to photograph it because the light's just on the tree and not on everything around behind it. But you know, that's luck of the draw. Uh, but we're talking about competition. This is the best of what you have. So if you have the ability to go past this a couple of times, I would encourage you different times of day, go back and just sort of see what this looks like, play with a couple of different angles, uh, because, you know, this is all so competing. You have the intricate lines of, you know, what's left of the, the rope work that's here and the, and the lines, but it's getting confused with the trees and power lines, you know, it looks like back here. And then it, you've taken it out over here and it kind of shows, uh, you know, you know, those kind of detailed things are going to kill you for this. Fred Morton, intruder. <laughs> Clever. Love the title. Love, love, love the title. Uh, wave a magic wand. I'd have it not so bright outdoors. Uh, but, you know, that sort of adds to this. Then you wouldn't have the silhouette. So, you know, you could just take that comment and toss it out the window. That's a, you know, it could be a 50-50 kind of thing. Uh, I wish I could see a little bit more so it wasn't like cut, like right on the curves of this thing. But uh, as far as creativity and seeing this and matching the title to something, well done. Jeff Stevens. Look at that. Weeds in a window and you do well. All right. It's who I am. All right. Uh, 
just again, the effect of this is so crazy strong that it's really hard to judge an image like this well, because then you start looking, it's like, well, what's these weird lines sort of going across here? Then the mouth looks really weird. Then you're getting like these weird shadows. And then you're getting a roll of the shoulder, which just looks like a nub kind of sticking out because we don't see like any more of the arm. Then you see like an awkward crease and then you see weird skin tones. So, you know, this is one of those things, sometimes this effect will work really well for an image and sometimes you put on image and it's just not the right thing. And we're gonna start looking at all the things I just started rattling off the top of my head, but that's what's going through the mind of judges, whether they articulate that to you or not, because some of them aren't gonna do that. They're not gonna step out there and say the kinds of things that I will. Um, and again, just my opinion, but when I'm looking at this, that's immediately what's going through. Uh, and then you see like the extreme, you know, cut of the eyes. So you're seeing almost more white than that. So, you know, it's one of those things for creativity of capturing this particular subject. You absolutely could have captured that and captured that message. But I don't think the technique applied this heavily is your friend for this. Bruce Murph. Maritime Forest Boneyard. All right. Uh, great scene. Uh, pretty cool texture that's in the sand is back here. You see what we're talking about for like time of day that we keep referencing. Again, this is just a teaching moment here. Uh, you know, you see the cool shadows and textures. If this was taken in the middle of the day, you wouldn't have that. So this is what's important when you're doing kind of these scenic kind of images. Uh, Presentation on this would help this kind of tremendously. Uh, you probably could have taken out maybe a little bit of this. This is really where a cool story is being told, like in this area here. Uh, and then, of course, always be careful with losing your highlights. Kurt Engemann. Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm All sorry. Right. The Nightmare on Elm Tree. <laughs> all right uh great title there uh so right out the gate just be careful on this bright white but i mean this is such a wacky thing to begin with you know that may not really matter so much um but it's one of those ones that's going to do either really well people are going to laugh at this and like kind of get it or not uh being technically critical on this you're missing detail and highlights areas on this i'm not sure the effect applied this heavily is the best thing for you. Uh, so maybe tone that down a little bit and see what it looks like. Karen Davis. <laughs> One and fun. Yeah, man, you never talk anything about babies because, you know, that's going to be somebody's kid or grandkid. And you'll get hammered later when you don't expect it. Your tires will be slashed. Um, so this is one of those uh, somebody's having a good day and they're having fun. Uh, it overall has like a really weird kind of cast to it, though, for that skin tone doesn't look like exceptionally natural, you know, and some like weird kind of shades like happening in the hair. So these look kind of realistic back here, but I'm not really sure what's going on here. Uh, again, a little bit of presentation would be helpful on this. Uh, the mother and the grandma of this kid would no doubt love this image. Rebecca Perry. out at home all right nice sports action shot here looks like they've captured all the action be careful and make sure you're not losing detail and kind of your darker areas of this kind of shot because you have it here you have this sort of capture but you're kind of losing it in these other areas uh, so be careful there but nice uh, decisive moment tone down that white uh, that's a little bold for this carol hageman Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia. All right. So, uh, you know, again, back to the time of day. You know, this looks like it's taken pretty much, you know, midday. It looks kind of flat lighting all the way across that. And I bet if you showed up here either in the morning or in the evening and had some warm, beautiful light across there, it would look incredible. 
uh, I would encourage the maker to do that. Uh, sometimes people are like, Anthony, that's when the bus stopped there. Well, so be it, then maybe it's not a competition image. If you have the luxury to be able to go out and go to the scene different times of day, I think you'll see that what I'm saying is probably true. Ken Halverson. Please. All right, so uh, not sure, please what? Maybe looking up at a big old hunk of bananas or something. Doesn't look entirely sharp is the first thing that kind of bothers me. Uh, and this little guy or gal looks like to have some pretty expressive eyes. And I just love like how they're kind of glossed over there and I can really buy into the story that they're really looking at something delicious and would love to have that. Uh, but it's not sharp. It's not sharp across there. It's not crisp. We're not seeing, you know, the detail that's in that. That nose is practically all the way out of focus. And then we have what appears to be maybe a little bit of detail here, but just could be from the, the shadows of that. Uh, and then we've got, you know, this armpit that's just out of control. So, uh, you know, uh, give them a razor or tone down, you know, like these white areas, because look how bright these white areas are here sort of competing against the light areas that are around those eyes. So if you took this out or toned that down, look at how much more those expressive eyes and that face is gonna stand out. Marianne Barnhart. Poised. All right, nice portrait. Uh, so the only, well, I'll point out a couple of good things. Good thing is, is posing and like the tones of this are like really nice. Uh, not sure what's going on here. I don't know if that's a weird shadow. I don't know if that's something that's on her and part of her, which in case we'll, you know, for, for go that, just be aware judges are going to look at that and spend time trying to figure out what that is because it's dead center in your image. OK, uh, then you have these straps, which, of course, is part of the outfit. You've probably toned them down a little bit, probably take them down a little bit more. Uh, but nice posing, a little bright on the hand up here, really bright on that forehead. There's no detail. It's there. And so the brightest part of the entire image is that one little spot right there. And that's not necessarily the spot you want me to go to because the mask of her face is beautiful. Um, I would probably rotate her chin a little bit more. And then this is one of those cases, flip this image and see if it reads better left to right over the way it's presented here. Susan Van Menen. Oh, and put a presentation on that. That would help as well. But that's the tones of this, really nice. Power. All right, simple title. Thank you, brilliant. Uh, this is great. Love this being a slim line. It's to the point. It's simple. It's clean. You can understand it. Uh, make sure you have detail in those highlight areas. Uh, this is one of those, again, a little bit of a presentation on this would look really cool because you've got such beautiful blues. You could pull something out. And this is a case where you could pick a shade of one of those whites or kind of bluish whites that's in there as a stroke on that. But if you put a presentation on this, it would look even better. Paul Bigfoot. Pride of the pride. All right. So for this, I can't. Well, I'll back off for a second. So this is, this is a nice capture. So the tones of this are, are nice. This presentation is really overdone because this is what's so amazing in this scene. These little faces alone right here could be an image. I don't know that the tongue being out is a friend of this particular pose. If you had a shot that you took like a second before or a second after where it's just their faces, I think you would have even more impact in this image. And then kind of overall, it looks a little mushy. And I'm not sure where that's coming from. I don't know if it's in the post processing. I don't know if it's cropped so much from the original, because uh, I doubt you're laying in the grass in front of them. Maybe you were. 
Uh, but there's cool fur and texture here. So I think you have the ability to do that. Uh, but man, I really, really, really want to enjoy this image. Get rid of this crazy boldness, which is on the outside. See if you have another image where they're not sticking their tongue out. Harold Lennon. Private tranquility. All right. These are incredibly challenging to photograph. And for this very reason, right here. And, you know, your judges are immediately going to go and see if there's detail in your highlight areas and these waterfalls that are coming down through here. And when you get that highlight area, they're going to can you technically because that's there. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of skill that can go into capturing this along with being there at the right time of day or using the proper filtration and exposures or filters to bring this scene into compliance for a properly a proper exposure to achieve this look. Uh, there are them. So, sorry, man, jump the gun on that. Uh, the tones of this presentation, though, really enjoyed that. That is well done. Lara Davenport. Sail on dark water. Nice. So uh, really cool, very simple uh, design here. Nice little uh, reflection that we're having coming across. Really nice sort of skimming across here. Probably would need a little less headroom and a little more in the back and that way you could sort of slim line this whole thing even would be another option to play with um might make it a little more interesting because right now it's a little static on finding a place for your eye to feel comfortable as far as the subject goes carol annis saturday morning at the barber shop all right so overall, this is a really bright scene and you've got nice dark tones probably which are happening in here, but all those brights just look like they're brighter than what they should be for that particular scene that's in there. And then you've given me this crazy bright white mat on the outside, which draws me to the outside where I wanna keep the interest in here. Linda Fern Schmiel. Serenity. All right. So for this, I you know the first thing out of the out of the gate, I wish this shell were turned a little bit more so you see the side of that rather than this coming in. The focus is so narrow in this. This has gone extremely out of focus back behind you. So what we're having is we have like this really cool subject, and then we've got these blasting out of focus bright colors in the background. So my eye goes from here to back here to over to that, but there's nothing really to see there because it's not in focus and I can't see it. So I think your story that you want to tell is probably in this, and you probably could have come in much closer to tell this story of this scene or definitely, you know, slimline this. And then the crazy wide uh, stroke that you have on there could probably be toned down by maybe about half and maybe a little bit darker and see if that makes that whole thing pop a little bit more. Tony Johnson. Slipper Orchid. All right. Uh, this is nice. Nice focus across here. Nice stroke that you have on the outside. Uh, but the circles of confusion you have back here are just too competing for your subject. Because I want to look at this and I want to look at the colors and the tones that's in that. But then I have these massive out of focus circles that are outside here that are really fighting for attention over what you want me to look at. Susan Kennedy. Sun up. All right. So technically you have some center spots which need to be addressed here. So always look over your images for those little guys because they're going to catch you when you least expect it. Uh, nice placement inside here. Uh, they don't see anything really too wacky happening around the silhouette, which is normally what I'm looking for when you have something like this. It's a sunrise or sunset, depending on which coast that you're on or where you are. Uh, but other than that, you know, again, a presentation would probably help this quite a bit. 
but uh, definitely go through and clean up those sensor spots, which are, you know, the more I find, you know, then you see even more of them. So be careful of those. Jay Denny. Surfer. All right. So right off the bat, you're telling me as a surfer, but I can't see that story because there's not enough there for me to sort of see that. Uh, and then you've got this really crazy harsh technique in this crazy weird outline, which is happening all the way around this. And then I start looking at other things. It's just uh, not a flattering texture that's sort of coming across that skin. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to read what this story is about. So then I start looking at the technical details and then you get like ghosting. It's across here. You got the black line that's coming down across the neck here. You got the splotches. So it starts falling apart on you. So uh, think about the story that you're trying to convey uh, and then think about the technique that you're using. And does that add to your story that you're trying to tell us? Marianne Barnhart. The count. <laughs> All right. So this is kind of comical. You know, this is one of those things, you know, where your lighting is like, wow, look at that crazy shadow. But, you know, that just sort of reminds me of like old Hollywood kind of lighting with having that crazy shadow. Uh, you know, kind of a weird, wacky technique that's applied, you know, across that. But I think this whole thing <clears throat> is clearly supposed to be a little whimsical. So uh, I'll give you some leeway on that. It's a pretty funny image. Uh, and even interesting how you've done the, the, somewhat floating uh, presentation there. So for pretty interesting, pretty, pretty comical image. Joe Ring. Three for fighting. <clears throat> All right, so it's, it's a little hard to kind of see that because there's so much going on here sort of in the foreground. Uh, so I think your story is obviously what's happening that's back here in this area. So I would ideally like to see this come in a lot closer or even a slim line on this would really be amazing because, you know, it just feels like snow, feels like cold. I want to see this. And I think it may be in there. Uh, you know, go back to your original image and see what's there. But this right here, this whole big area is really competing against what's happening in this area back here. Uh, then last comment is just be careful on this really dark vignetting, uh, which is so obvious. Philip Snyder, transcending time. All right, so, you know, this is an interesting character here, you know, uh, but again, the first thing I sort of see, it's not really super sharp like anywhere on the image, all of it just kind of looks like it's kind of glowing. So if it was glowing and had kind of like a different tone or to it, you know, or maybe it was like older or maybe you were a black and white or something like that, then it would maybe make a little bit more sense to me. Uh, but it's just sort of a blank kind of stare. So, you know, it's hard for me to weave a story into this. And then again, sort of technically nothing is really sharp anywhere in the image. Leo Weinberg, waiting for winter. All right. So uh, again, you've got, you know, interesting little critter here waiting. It looks like it's either been cropped in quite a bit or over sharpened maybe on the bird. These are just speculations. Again, I'm making my mind would not always necessarily verbalize that during a competition. But what I'm looking at is look how realistic and sharp the leaves look here. But then once you get back to this bird and you look at that, you see how much more jagged that sort of looks all around that area over what I'm seeing here. So either the focus was missed because of a uh, lack of depth of field and this is sharp and it wasn't sharp enough to capture your subject back here or some weird sharpening has been done to this. So we get past that, then what do we have? We have these giant white circles back here that are competing for attention against your subject that is here. So um, not sure this would be the best image for competition, uh, but great subject and actually not a bad placement had these other elements not been here to compete. Sarah, waiting. Yeah, I get, I get that. Um, interesting tone in, in this. 
you know, this is one of those ones sort of takes you a second to sort of, you know, think about this and see the faces that are in there and, you know, everything else. Um, so it's, you know, it's just interesting. I would, you know, again, one of those things would be going through my mind would be what would this look like as a, as a black and white image. And the reason I say that is we just have such wacky kind of tones that are happening. We got something like this green, you know, some algae growing back here, but then this looks kind of magenta-ish down here and then kind of bluish on the walls. So I'm not really sure how we achieve like all these random sort of shades that are going in that. And sometimes you do come across, there could be stained glass windows that's providing, you know, the lighting into this that's causing that to happen. You know, we can't, we don't know that as judges, we can only go off what's there. Uh, but when I'm looking at that, you know, I think, wow, what would that look like as a black and white? And, you know, that, that may solve some of those color issues that sometimes you run into. Wiley one beer. Warmed by the sun. All right. So, um, you know, it's, it's a nice title, but when I hear warm by the sun, what do people generally think of? They think of their body being warm by the sun. What's being warm by the sun is her back of her head and her hair. Maybe she enjoys that, but that's one of those things. That's what we're thinking subconsciously when we're looking at these images and going through. The other thing is her face doesn't really look like enjoyment. It doesn't look like she's enjoying that warmth. It looks a little blank to me. And sometimes as photographers, we have to put our subjects into the <clears throat> mindset or frame of mind that you want them to be in for the story that you're trying to tell. So in this particular case, you know, what are you trying to tell me? What's the story you're trying to tell me? Uh, so since I don't quite understand why she's enjoying the light on the back of her head, then I start looking at the technical elements. Uh, yes, the skin's different here than it's here and it gets really light across the chest here. That's typical but we can kind of tone these things down a little bit. Um, her placement, I actually enjoy in this. I, it's bold to put it in an offset into the side. So that's great. As far as hair light, this is, you know, us old guys, remember Civil Shepherd, that's probably in her contract, that nice glow without blowing the hair out. Those are great. That part of it is well handled. Just address the other issues, nice presentation. Bill Woodsworth. <clears throat> woman and her dog so what would be really cool and i'm just going to guess this is street photography if we could see that eyeball of that old lady you know is she using this dog to try to hide from you don't take my picture you're gonna get my dog you know it's kind of fun you know it's kind of a fun image nice texture in the dog you know kind of a fun capture great for doing it in black and white but I really wish I could see that eyeball and that would totally change the story of this for me. Kemp Davis. And that is the last picture, the last image. No the, way. Uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> All right. I am going to stop sharing. We're ready for but the I will, not, in the Shoshone. I will not stop caring, but I will stop sharing. There we go. <clears throat> Well, thanks, Anthony. That was great. Very helpful as always. The question is, do we have anybody left? Did anybody actually make it through the end of that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Pretty much everybody. <laughs> I'm sure. Good job. All right. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot of images, guys. So you know, hopefully, bless you. <laughs> so hopefully you guys heard some of the, the kind of the, re, the recurring comments there, you know, you know, for the, the folks that may be new, <clears throat> you know, look at the, the 12 elements that we always look at for PPA competition. You can, you can look that up. And those are the elements that we're going by. You know, it's really hard to try to standardize art and put everybody on a level playing field is a challenge for a judge to do. So the way that they try to accomplish that is by having those 12 elements. And then that's kind of our guideline to look by. And we go and we try to check as many of those 12 elements that we can to determine if that for competition wise is a good competition image worthy of a higher score. 
So for those of you that may not be aware of that, you know, Google it. If you can't find it, let me know. I'll be more than happy to send it to you. Uh, we're probably running close on time. I would imagine that was a pretty long haul to get through those. Uh, but I want to give you as much comment going through them as I could. If anybody has questions about their images that they'd like to shoot me an email, uh, Anthony at anthonyrumley.com. If you don't hear from me in a couple of days, it probably went to spam. Right. <laughs> <laughs> goes through. Yeah, I'd like to um, say something. Go right ahead. I don't know where you went. <laughs> Your image yeah. went away. I'm some. I'm somewhere. In yeah, place. there you are. You're back. Okay. Uh, I've been in this club a long time, and you've done a number of um, presentations and evaluations and all that. And I think this was probably one of the best you've done. Oh, uh, thank you. I, I like the frankness. I like the uh, um, the way you put it together, and you. you you said things, so thank you. I'm, I appreciate I'm, that. Thank you, sir. I'm going home now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for showing up there. I appreciate it. Next time you'll get to see my smiling face in person. I just wanted to pass along that there are a lot of thank yous coming in on Zoom. So again, thanks, Anthony. It was great. Glad to do it. Glad to do it.